Um, my name is Casper, uh, and I'm going to talk about designing printed circuit boards using code. Uh, so hardware description languages and programming languages. So just a little bit about me. I'm a freelance electronic in design engineer, and I love writing code, and I love open source, and especially electronics. Um, these are just some of my projects, my, like my uh, paid projects, which are not open source, unfortunately. But uh, there's a Braille display and a kind of a VR, uh, VR chair controller. Uh, so you notice I like, said I like to code and that I like hardware, but I didn't like uh, it didn't say I like designing hardware all that much. And it's very frustrating with, uh, I get very frustrated when designing electronics. And uh, this is normally a summary of how electronics designs are done when I've given this presentation in the past. But I think <laughs> after the Kaika talk, I think we're all on the same page. Um, so you normally have a schematic tool and a PCB layout tool. And you define your connections in your schematic tool and then you lay out, you, you route the connections in your PCB layout tool on a kind of physical model of your board. So if you're designing digital hardware, something to be run on FPGAs, you actually use schematic entry as well. Uh, but, well, you can use schematic entry, but uh, hardware description languages were invented in the 80s, and that's largely how people design digital hardware. Um, uh, the reason for this is because st schematic entry for this kind of thing becomes really confusing. Um, you can try and get this URL of this puzzle here and try and solve it. I haven't had time to do it myself yet, but it's not mine. It's someone else, uh, and it's available at that URL. Um, so we use code to describe logic circuits because it's much easier to manage the complexity. And uh, so these are known as hardware description language, or HDLs. And that's for digital circuits. So schematic entry for PCB designs can be quite confusing as well, uh, especially if we have uh, high pin count components such as FPGA. Uh, and these days, schematics use a lot of labels, and they kind of jump around all over the place. Um, and it's, it's often quite hard to follow w the kind of the, the route all these signals are taking. So people have tried to extend HDLs for analog and mixed signal design. And uh, Verilog A was designed in 1993, and it was merged into Verilog AMS in 2000. Um, there's also analog and mixed signal extensions for VHDL, uh, and some more experimental ones where I couldn't actually find implementations of. But these, there's also SPICE, which I forgot last time I gave this talk. Um, but all of these are really about uh, simulating, about simulating the actual behavior of your electronic circuits. And I suppose I'm interested in just replacing the schematic entry and making that easier. Um, so all these details of what, how, what the actual behavior of the, stick, of the, of the components are is too much detail, and it's going to be a lot more work than just defining the, the actual netlists or schematics. So the um, question really is, what, what, what's so attractive about, about this, what, w about using, s using software for uh, using, uh, using code for uh, designing circuits? And you're hoping for fast iteration cycle, faster iteration cycles. And you're hoping to use programming constructs and tools for a faster, a better design process. And hopefully you could get modularity and reusability. So the first language that I came across that tries to solve this is uh, PHDL, or the PCB Hardware Description Language. And this is what it looks like. It's quite a, quite a clean uh, syntax for describing circuits. Um, so, but it's its own language, so that come, does come with disadvantages. You don't have a general purpose language and it's not as expressive as a general purpose language. Uh, it's from 2011. So like I said, it's a new language. Uh, the uh, compiler is Java-based, and it has an IDE, actually, where you can, which will help you and guide you in your design process. And it can output Eagle and Orcard 
OCAD net, netlist natively currently, and there's some conversion programs for others, but I haven't investigated fully. Um, so the next one I came across is uh, Skittle, uh, and this was created in 2016, and it's a library and language in Python, really. So this is Python. What might confuse you a bit if you're used to Python is that there's some operator overloading going on there, and the plus equals has been overloaded to make connections. And there's kind of this implicit circuit in the background that's being built up. And then once you, if you use the generate netlist command, it will produce a Kaigad netlist. Um, so Skittle also has some uh, provisions for reusing bits of sub-circuits. Um, and this is done through uh, functions, really. Um, uh, so you notice that in the function, you def the, the arguments are the inputs and outputs of the circuit. So when you reuse the circuit, you, you apply the functions to your inputs and outputs. Uh, uh, another one that's quite uh, fairly similar in some ways is PyCircuit, which was created a little bit later and is also uh, embedded in Python. And it uh, also outputs uh, KiCad files, though it outputs KiCad PCB files rather than netlists. So it'll have, this means you don't, it makes it a bit easier to have the, the, uh, the, the uh, footprints embedded into your output, so you don't need to worry about where your libraries are, which you would need to do, which you would need to if you uh, work from a netlist. Um, it also has uh, it kind of the default way to do things is in this modular way with functions, and again, inputs and outputs are what uh, you're, 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 you're parameterizing over when you use, uh, have reusable bits PyCircuit also does layout, um, so you um, yeah you can you can try and do layout with it, and it has some experimental support for hooking into SMT solvers to try and s solve layout as a constraint problem, which is quite interesting. It doesn't uh, it's still it's it's experimental. Um, so. I've been, I've been kind of, I've, con I've contributed a bit the, to these projects and discussing with the project creators, and uh, I kind of, I've started to make a playground for my ideas for what I would like in uh, a, a circuit description language, really. And I decided to do it in JavaScript because we already have two in Python now, um, and uh, this is what I, I, I've started working on. I call it Replicad, and the goals are really to much like the others, it's uh, to make it easier to do schematic entry um, and make it easier to reason about circuits and also to confirm Atwood's law, which is that everything that can be written in JavaScript will be written in JavaScript. Um, and I, I, I really want to get down to this issue of um, <coughs> issue of uh, if it, it could get really hard to debug. Um, uh, your circuit programs, really. So I'll, I'll, that's my goal with, with creating this, to try and use static analysis and uh, electrical rules checks and really make it hard for you to introduce errors. Um, yeah, I have some other, other ideas uh, um, such that uh, <coughs> if you look at this, the variable names are used as the schematic uh, references. So the way I do this, the way I'm, I've played around with doing this is to use uh, JavaScript language transforms, which then, um, the, when, you, when you have, when you say my resistor is R1, and you just give it the value of the resistor, the resistor and then in your, in your schematic or in your output, really, R1 will be that resistor. <coughs> so I'm using kind of these uh, language language macros or processing to, to get that done. Uh, and there's an explicit, there's an explicit circuit object. So uh, with both uh, Skittle and, and PyCircuit, there's this implicit 
circuit object which is being modified. And uh, here you have to say, I'm, I'm instantiating a circuit, and then I will add connections to it. And that's how, when you add connections, you also then implicitly add the components to the circuit. Because why, why, yeah. <laughs> um, and what I'm hoping to do is do, to do function arguments uh, so functions parameterize over, uh, over not, or not over connections, but over the values in your circuit. So uh, you can, this is a resistor divider, and you can instantiate a new resistor divider with different values of, of different re uh, resistors. Um, and then you return your circuit, and you can reuse that in another circuit. Um, so some of the some of these issues we've already touched on, um, but the, the pros really would be that you define everything once and you reuse it, and you reuse programming constructs to to uh, make design easier. Uh, some of the issues are it's that it's hard to visualize what's going on. You, you, it is kind of it is in the end a visual task, and you want to see where the connections are going. Uh, it can still be very tedious and. Uh, it, yeah, debugging could be a nightmare, and I've, I've touched a bit on that, on what I plan to do in Replicad for that. But on the subject of visualization, because visual, with the schematics, I like reading schematics, but making them can be a pain. And I like reading good, some good schematics, so really we want some kind of visual output from our programming, from our circuit language. Um, so the, the, I added this graph this output to Skittle, uh, I kind of made it a look a bit like a schematic, though it, it, it would never, I, I knew it would never look like a schematic. Um, and uh, that's kind of how far I got with it. It seemed like it, um, it would be OK for simpler circuits, but as things scale up, it could get problematic. PyCircuit already had some uh, graphless visualization as well. And the reason this looks like this is that there was uh, kind of a prototype for a for an interactive editor where you could click on different nodes. So all of these bits are really nice and clickable. Um, uh, and then it will highlight on, on, your, on your layout side what, what, what everything is. Um, so fairly recently, I came across Netlist SVG. And that's a, uh, that's an, uh, that draws SVG, SVG schematics from Yosis, uh, JSON Netlist. And they look uh, amazingly good. Um, so we tried to uh, make an analog skin for Netlist SVG. And these were some of the initial results we got from that, which is there's some oddities. You wouldn't necessarily draw it like this, but it, I think it looks very promising to me. And this is the most recent example of that, which was because uh, David Craven has hooked up Netlist SVG to PyCircuit now. And this is one of the outputs from that. So uh, the other thing that I have been working on is, or well, thinking about, is we already have quite a specific language as electronic engineers. Um, we already have a lot of words, and we already, and I'd like to, we'd like to re really reuse that language when we're when we're in our circuit description language. So um, the project uh, I came up with this, which is called Electrogrammer. And I probably don't have, have time for the demo, but pretty much it, it takes quite the the descriptions that you normally use in your bill of materials or on your in your in your in your schematics, and it gives you a past output for that. So that means that um, it gives you a very quick way of defining components, and it, it it's kind of um, Right now, this first version was JavaScript only, and it does capacitors, resistors, and as LED, uh, LEDs, the S uh, surface mount versions. It's a lax parser, so you can, you can put things in any order. It understands what you mean, and it ignores invalid input. So it's, kind of, it's useful for search applications, really, where you might say capacitor you know, for, my, uh, for, for my PCB design one microfarad, and it will understand capacitor one microfarad and take that and ignore the rest. Uh, so we're w currently working on Electrogrammer version 2. Um, 
which we'll be using Antler for. Which so we will have parsers for JavaScript, Python, Java, C, C++, Go, and uh, pr we could probably do C sharp. I don't know. Antler has a lot of language outputs, and we'll we've been expanding. Well, David Craven has been <laughs> expanding. David's doing a lot of work. Um, uh, he's been expanding it to diodes and transistors. Uh, yeah. And SMD and through whole parts, because for even for transistors we have often have very structured uh, names for them, so uh, it's it's suitable. And we will do. Oh, well, looks better actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Um, uh, yeah, and we were doing a, a strict parser so that uh, there'd be a version where you really have to put things. You have to say one microfarad and then ten percent tolerance on one microfarad. And they really have to be in order. So should you use any of this? Um, well, it's all a bit alpha and experimental. Um, uh, so I think if you're interested in the subject, definitely look at these projects and try and contribute and try to get them into a better state. Um, uh, so this is, was all about schematics, really. and. The title of the talk is short, and uh, we're mostly talking about schematic netlist entry. And of course, you can do other things w with programming languages. And uh, KiCad Mod Tree is a Python DSL for KiCad for prints, and that's being used in the standard library for KiCad to generate things. Uh, there's KDA, which is a CoffeeScript JavaScript utility for making complete libraries, and that's now also being integrated into PyCircuit. Um, uh, so layout, I already mentioned PyCircuit can do layout, and of course you can do scripting within KiCad, uh, and you use use your programming constructs that way to help you make uh, make tasks easier. So kind of back to this, uh, we've addressed some of these, um, but uh, just on like on the third point, the modularity and reusability. Uh, there's obviously other ways. You, you don't necessarily have to use programming language to make reusable bits of circuit components. And uh, you can also... Uh, <coughs> diffs would be another great thing that you that would be great to do in... Um, that you can... That's, uh, that you don't necessarily need code for diffs. You can do visual diffs. Um, uh, but kind of on the subject of reuse, this is my other project, which is kidspace.org, which uh, has reusable bits of uh, like complete project, completely defined projects that you could possibly reuse. And it would be interesting to expand this to have uh, support for using this as a kind of NPM or like a, a module repository to pull in bits of cir circuits into your circuit. Um, that's me, actually. So I can actually I could maybe do the demo. Uh, uh, I've I'm I'm 18. Uh, it says 18 minutes. Uh, I'll try and do the demo while you think of questions. Uh, uh, how do I mirror? Yeah, so this is the demo of Electrogramma. So, <coughs> French. That's not Electrogramma's fault. <laughs> hmm, it's frozen. Okay, I think I'll take questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, questions. Um, yeah.
anything. You just said get it directly from the description language to it. That link will have a detached org file. Mm. But a common comment for people to do things like make sure they don't have outputs tied together or power plants tied together before they do that. You know, in a typical schematic editor, is that something that yeah. you provide? Or I'm aware that, uh, so the question is, um, whether ERC checks are uh, provided in any of these uh, circuit description languages. And I'm aware that definitely for uh, Skittle and PyCircuit, they have built-in ERC functions. And it's something for Replicat, it's not done yet, obviously. I'm just starting out with it. And, but it's something I really want to focus on, kind of <coughs> seeing where, where static analysis ends and where the ERC checks begin, really. Yeah, the closest thing, the question was whether there was a uh, uh, kind of integrated solution for visualizing uh, the, the PCB and the, 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 the schematic and the PCB and the code in one kind of package. And I know uh, Dave Craven again from PyCircuit is working on a, on a viewer. I will be as well for Replicad. We'll probably collaborate on this somehow. Uh, yeah. There's, there's, there's only, there's nothing ready yet. Yep. In, in, in terms of languages, uh, Verilog AMS hmm. supports, has language support for the, uh, for, 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 lay, for layout information, like placement and rotation and how things can be moved to be oh, okay. layout. And um, actually, a couple of years ago at, at Bosnia, I made a presentation on, on, essentially on the use of that to try to, try to do simulation layout and schematic all in the same file. Oh. Uh, but basically just using a, using a handful of WIFDEF to, to, to direct it so that you can actually actually get all three in a single file. Okay. And, um, yeah, that's, I, I'll have to, so the... Un, un, the unfortunately, I haven't really had the time to follow through on it to mm. actually, actually make some translations, but, it, but the idea was to try it. Right. So, I mean, the, 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 well, not really a question. The statement was that there's, uh, there's layout information. There's, there's possibility to do layout with, uh, with uh, Verilog AMS. Um, I haven't looked too closely at Verilog MLS, AMS because it seemed like it was very targeted at simulation, and that's not what I was interested in. But yeah, I will also check out your presentation, yeah. but not before then. Yeah. Again.